All right, today I'm canning mandarin oranges. I have two three pound um, bags of little mandarins and I'm taking them out. I'm peeling them the best I can. I'm getting as much of that um, pith off as I possibly can. And um, then I'm gonna fill them into pint jars. And then I'll bring you back when I'm that to that point. But canning, canning mandarin oranges. And what I'm doing too is I'm saving all the peels. Because then with the peels, I'm gonna make two, th two products. I'm gonna make orange extract as soon as I go get some vodka. And uh, I'm also making um, citrus cleaner. And, and uh, I'll show you that all when I get that all together. Okay, you're gonna have to forgive my messy kitchen. I, out of that six pounds of uh, mandarin, I got seven pints of mandarin uh, oranges. They're pretty full. I filled up my jars to about the one inch mark. And I tasted the orange and they were pretty tart. So I decided I added a teaspoon of sugar to each jar. Um, I'd rather do it this way than put the simple syrup on it because it's more measurable so I know exactly how many points per jar it is. So all I have is the one teaspoon per jar except for that one. I put one and a half teaspoons in that one or a half a tablespoon. Just It looked like too much so I changed it up to the teaspoon. So I'm waiting for my water to boil. I'm going to uh, fill these jars up with water. Then I'll wipe the rims down with some vinegar and cap them off. And then I'm going to process these puppies for 20 minutes. I'll bring you back. All right, I'm filling my jars now with the water. Oh, this water, it was up at a boil. I just turned it down. I don't need it boiling, boiling, because it's going to boil in the pot once I get everything. Then I'm just going to fill this up to about an inch head space which is about the, that first ring down there on the on the jar. This right here, that's about an inch head space. I'm going to take my debubbler tool. And I'm just going to go around here to get any air pockets out that might be in there. It doesn't have to be exact. You just, you know, kind of get it around though. And then I'm going to take this out, my funnel. And kind of push the rest of the food. I'm trying to do this one-handed, so just the rest of it, to, so that everything's under the water. And, and it's got a little bit more water in it than I like, but I'm going to leave it. I'm going to take my paper towel here. I dipped this into just a little dish of white vinegar, and I go around just around the rim. These are brand new jars, so they should be okay. Oh, there goes my light. Yeah, sometimes this light doesn't want to work. It, I, the connection's kind of bad. All right, and then I have to hang on. All right, I had to go get my lid. And I'm just going to put this on finger tight. I don't want it super tight. If you put it on too tight, the jar can actually crack once you get into the canner. All right, and since I have hot water in my canner, I'm using my jar lifters to get it in there. And then it's going to go in the water bath with everybody else. Now, I use my Presto pressure canner, even for even though these are going to be water baits, so I'm not going to put my pressure gauge on this. Um, and I'll be back when I get to this point. All right, I've got all seven of my jars filled and capped, and they're in the water waiting for it to come to a boil. I'm going to put the lid on here, and as soon as that comes to a boil, I'll start the timer for 20 minutes. Well, today I'm canning mandarin oranges, and a uh, very simple thing to do. It's a great way to preserve um, your fruit when you find it on sale. Um, I got two three-pound bags of these, um, they're called Mandy's at Walmart. three pounds each so I got six pounds of of uh, mandarin oranges uh, the most time-consuming part is just getting them peeled 
and you know breaking the segments apart you don't have to segment them you can can them whole if you want to or have them I like just the individual little segments because I like to take them out and use them on salads or maybe put them on top of cottage cheese uh, just anything you would use a fruit for. Um, you can, it's the same process if you want to can oranges or grapefruits when they're on sale. Um, like I said, it's a great way to uh, stock up when when it's on sale and then they won't go bad. You can, and they're shelf stable for at least a year. Um, most of my stuff lasts pretty good for two or three years. Um, the rule of thumb is you rotate out after a year uh, if you have any left. <laughs> So, um, but uh, that's what I decided to do this afternoon. So, um, I might do more later if they're still on sale. But I kind of like to shop the seasonal stuff. And uh, if if I get a good price, I think what I, I think these were, I got them for $2.99 a bag. So, I thought, okay, well, I'm going to get a couple of them and just can them up. And so I now have seven pints. Seven pints for me by myself, that's all quite a bit, you know. But like I said, they would have gone bad. Even one bag would have gone bad before I could have eaten them all. So now the one, these, and I'll show you um, when I show you the actual canning process. Um, these are kind of tart. So I didn't want to make a big syrup to put on them uh, because it's hard to, you know, count the sugar then. So what I did was I took a, one and a half tablespoons and put it in one jar of sugar. And that looked like it was going to be too much sugar. So I then went to um, a half a teaspoon or half, half a tablespoon of sugar in each jar. And that sugar uh, will dissolve as it cooks and as it sits. It might not dissolve in the 20 minutes that it's in the canner, but in a day or two, that sugar will all completely dissolve into the jar. And then you know how many points are in that jar because the orange itself is zero. So you're only counting that uh, half a ta tablespoon, one and a half teaspoons of sugar uh, in your points for the, for the entire jar. So, and there's probably two servings in each jar. So I use my Presto pressure cooker for everything, whether I water bath or whether I pressure can. Uh, you don't have to use it as a pressure canner all the time. I have the rack on the bottom and I put it in and I put um, a different lid on top of it, as you'll see. And you've seen in my videos before, um, so that it's not being pressurized at all. <coughs> Excuse me. But that way you don't have to buy a hundred different things, you know. So you need um, a canner of some sort. You can either use a pressure canner like I am, or um, they do have water bath canners you can get at Walmart for around 30 bucks. And they're a big, uh, well, it's just a big pot with a, with a lid. I don't know what, there's a certain name for it. It almost looks like an enamel, but it's not. Um... I prefer to use my pressure canner only because it lasts longer. I mean, you buy one of those pressure canners, they last forever. And the other canners that they have there, the water bath canners, so-called, um, tend to rust out in the bottom. <clears throat> so you'll need, you need that. You need uh, canning tools like the jar lifters and um, the debubbler tool, which if you buy the set at Walmart, you, can, you get a funnel, which you need the jar lifter and the debubbler tool all together. And I use that the one end of the, the, the tool to go around and get the air bubbles out of the jar. And the other one has, the other end has little notches in it that uh, tell you how much headspace you have. Now for these oranges that I'm doing, I need an inch headspace. So um, it's a very useful tool. And that's basically all the equipment that you need to get started in water bath canning other than your jars. And um, let me say this about the jars. They're also a one-time purchase because you can reuse those jars over and over and over again. I have jars that I use still that I bet I've had for 20 years. Now every year I check them to make sure there aren't any nicks in the rim because if 
if the if there are nicks or scratches in the rim, the jars no the jars won't seal. So you have to get rid of those. Use them for crafts though, you know. Once I stop using them for canning, I'll put a, you know, I'll make a craft out of it somehow. Put a plant in it or something. Uh, so anyway, it's really a very cost-effective way. Now, I don't know how much mandarin oranges are for what's a pint. Uh, how many ounces is a pint? I don't even know. 16 ounces? So usually when you buy mandarin oranges, they're in the smaller cans in the, in the store. So I haven't done a price comparison yet. I might do that before I end this video just to let you know what, like, what the Kroger price is and what the Walmart price is. Um per ounce but when I'm paying $2.99 for three pounds and I I got seven pints so seven times 16 is 4200 and uh, 14 ounces is that right something like that I'll figure it out and I'll let you know because I like to do that just to make sure that I I am being cost-effective um, the other thing, too, is that you'll notice when you buy a can, it always says, you know, it has an expiration date on it. These, you know, I'll mark on March 14th, 2000, you know, 2020, and uh, they're still going to be good a year from now. So, not only that, it just feels like a good accomplishment, you know, to know that you have done this yourself. So... I also want to talk about, so I got these, like I said, I got these six pounds for $2.99 each. So I paid, let's call it six bucks for six ounces, so, uh, or for six pounds, so a dollar, a dollar a pound. And, uh, but I'm not only getting the seven pints of uh, mandarin oranges, I'm also getting a disinfectant and I'm getting an extract. What I'm doing is I'm putting some of the orange peels into a mason jar and I'm going to cover it with vodka and cap it, set it in my cupboard for, you know, five or six weeks, and then I'll strain it and I'll have orange extract, which is great for cakes, cupcakes, waffles, pancakes, you know, just, you know, anything that you want a citrus flavor for. And the other thing I'm going to do is then in a gallon size or half gallon size mason jar I'm going to put the rest of my whatever I don't use for the extract of the peels and I'm going to cover that with white vinegar I'm going to cap it set it under the sink in two weeks guess what I'm going to have an orange scented disinfectant for my kitchen counter my table the bathroom anything it's that simple so for those six dollars I'm getting three different products not bad is it so I'm listening now for it to start boiling so I can start my timer for 20 minutes and um, I need to go to the store I just realized I need more white vinegar so I'm gonna run out to the to the store and get my white vinegar and my vodka tonight and I, so I can start that stuff and show you how I do that it's so simple um, I I was laughing kind of at all these people when I was at Walmart the other day and just frantically trying to buy cleaning supplies and everything. And I'm thinking, you know, you can make your own and you don't have to worry about it. I mean, you you could use bleach if you want to, but white vinegar is a great cleaner. It's a great disinfectant. So um, if you have mold anywhere, white vinegar with a little bit of tea tree oil or even the scented orange peels or lemon peels. You can do the same thing when you use lemons for stuff. You know, don't throw your lemon peels away. Make a disinfectant out of it. So, so many things you can make at home that you don't have to put the expense out because that Lysol stuff, yeah, it, it works. It's good. But so does my stuff. You know, my stuff is, is good and it's all natural. So, um, I encourage you to try start making your own stuff. <laughs> you'll save yourself money and you'll think, oh, look what I made. <laughs> so I do have a bottle of Lysol here. And when that's done, I'm going to save the spray bottle. Now, I don't have to. I have spray bottles that I pick up at the dollar store that I put funnel my stuff into, you know, for my cleaners. So there you go. 
one-time purchases. So look for your stuff on sale and, and it's so easy to can this. Now, I do want to tell you, after this 20 minutes is up, uh, I'm going to turn off the heat, I'm going to take off the lid, and I'm not going to touch the jars for another 10 minutes. I'm going to let them sit in the water for another 10 minutes because that it just the water, you know, they've been in there for 20 minutes. So it helps it, the jars readjust to the atmosphere because sometimes if you take them out too soon, they can crack. So, but I, I've never had that happen. People have just talked about it happening. It's never happened to me. So I'll bring you back on here uh, when I'm ready to take them out of the canner. All right. And then I'll show you what our mandarin oranges look like. Well, here they are. I have my seven pints of mandarin oranges. Don't they look pretty? Look how beautiful that is. I'm going to wait till tomorrow and I'll take the rings off and then I'll clean them up and put them on my shelf. So, yep, that's what I did today. This is the jar waiting for the vodka. I've got to go get that yet. And I've got a bigger jar for the cleaning solution. Uh, the other day I, I canned all these beans that I had. There's some, these are pinto beans. And here's black beans back here. So, this was the day everybody was going, going nuts in the grocery store. And I'm, I'm just here canning beans. So, but yeah, these oranges turned out really, these mandarins turned out really, really pretty. Really pleased the way they turned out. So, That's it, and it was so simple. Anybody can do this. Okay, I've used up all my orange peels. Now I've got one quart size jar that I'm gonna cover with this vodka. And then I've got my half gallon jar here, which I'm gonna put my vinegar in. I'm gonna put them both away. A couple weeks, or maybe six weeks, this will be orange extract. Couple weeks, this will be um, orange scented disinfectant cleaner. So I'll show you, I'll be back when I've got them filled up. All right, so this is what I got out of my three, out of my six pounds of mandarin oranges. I got seven pints of delicious mandarin orange wedges. I got a quart, it won't be quite a quart after I drain all this out of orange extract and I've got a half gallon here of citrus cleaner and disinfectant. This will be ready in about two weeks. This will be four to six weeks before it's ready. So this is going to go up in my cupboard, this is going to go into my sink, these will go on my shelf. And that's my mandarin orange day.